The Kentucky Wildcats making their way out onto the field here at Commonwealth Stadium and a tremendous crowd making it over from Knoxville, which is not that far away for today's game. And not that far away from the beer barrel is our comrade Bob Kessling. Bob? Tim, today Tennessee heavily favored in the contest, but they had the beer barrel and the cafeteria in the UT Athletic Dorm all week long. So when the players came in for breakfast or lunch or dinner, they saw the beer barrel knowing this Kentucky team could pull off an upset today just to remind them how important the game is today. But the Tennessee team was rocked when they got off the bus yesterday. They found out that Bubba Miller, Tennessee's captain, offensive guard, has been declared ineligible for receiving allegedly illegal gifts from boosters at Tennessee. They're going to seek reinstatement, but he will not be in the lineup today and he's made 45 straight starts for Tennessee and of course another key for Kentucky today can they stop Tennessee especially early the volunteers have scored touchdowns on their first possession 12 the last 14 games and the emotion of this game for Kentucky can they get up Bill Curry's job might be on the line and so the beer barrel today is at stake maybe so the future of Bill Curry as the Kentucky coach you know, it got its start back in 1925 when a couple of Wildcat followers wanted to come up with something symbolic. They actually wanted to use uh, old whiskey, but uh, that was during the times of Prohibition, and they were even politically correct back then and decided to opt for the beer barrel. You see the weather? Unless you can get more in a beer That's barrel. That's right. The temperature is 51 degrees. We're going to have winds gusting at better than 25 miles per hour before the day is done. Kentucky has that win. They won the toss, elected to defer. Sean Summers is back deep to receive for Tennessee. And he's joined back there by Terry Fair. Ryan Savinsky will get this one underway. The senior out of Lexington's Henry Clay High School. Comes down to Summers. the 25 yard line is Summers Reggie Rust down there to make the stop after a 14 yard return for Summers. Peyton Manning what a remarkable story he has been look at the touchdown to interception ratio he has uh, blossomed so very much from his freshman to his sophomore year and is only 19 years of age he was a high school senior at Newman in New Orleans at only 17 years of age up his volunteers on first down. Out of the eye formation. Looking long and it's dropped by Nash. Lehman Boyd was there to provide coverage and out of that eye formation you'll see the play action boot. That is the play they go with most often and that's the one uh, that they opted for there. You see the rest of that offense. Graham the outstanding running back and up front that line without Bubba Miller as mentioned by Bob Kessling earlier. You mentioned Bubba Miller out, and Trey Peterson will be the starter, and it's not like he hasn't played before. He started five ball games at left guard at the beginning of this season, so he's back in the starting lineup for today's ball game. Three wide receiver set for Tennessee. Quick pitch, and there's the cutback by Graham. Up to about the 35-yard line, gain of nearly eight. And the defense for Bill Curry, Dante Key has been moved from linebacker. Schellenberger plays on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And the secondary is led by George Harris, a senior out of Oakland, California at corner. And, of course, the free safety important today. And he's going to be a busy man. Reggie Rust is second on the team in tackles, leading interceptor in the game for them today. He needs to get up and be able to force quick. You just saw Jay Gray on that run in the last play. Third down and a long two for Manning. Pass is complete to the 40 for a first down to Joey Kent. George Harris comes up quickly to pop him. The Wildcats have been beset with injuries in that secondary. Defensive coordinator Mike Archer would tell you that the loss of Stephen Hall and Van Hiles to a concussion has really crippled this Kentucky defense which generally makes the opposition go the distance and not give up the big play. First and 10, Tennessee from the 41. Play fake. Incomplete. That one was tipped by Schellenberger, 49, the mid middle linebacker, junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. Watch Schellenberger here. You can see him looking at Peyton Manning. He sees the play action fake, and then he gets back into his zone. He uses all of his, I would say, 12-inch vertical leap right there to get a hand on the ball <laughs> and knock it away from Nash coming right across the middle. 
Not exactly the vertical leap that one of Rick Pitino's players might have. Just enough. Just enough. Nothing doing for Graham and Dante Key have the penetration to help force that play. He gets some help from Lamont Smith, 45. The outside linebacker, a sophomore out of Middletown, Ohio. As good as Tennessee is running the football, Dante Key, his quickness enables him to get in the backfield. It almost seems like he was untouched there. And that's one of the things that Tennessee has to account for because he's a lot faster than anybody who Tennessee has up and down that line. There you see what Tennessee has usually done. Only South Carolina and Arkansas kept them from scoring on their first possession this year. Manning, out of the pocket, loops it long intended for Marcus Nash. And the Kentucky defense holds, and that, believe me, is rare and worth some applause from their contingency here. Very good by Tennessee in that last play. Only rushing three men, putting eight men back in coverage, and forcing Peyton Manning to try and find an open receiver. No one was there, and the rush still got to him, even with just a three-man rush. Larry Binion will punt it away, and Keo Sanford is back deep, waiting in his 30th. Binion has had trouble with distance this year, but not with this one. And against the wind, Sanford in trouble. Yard line. So against the wind, Larry Binion gets all of it. Ronnie Pillow, a reserve running back, number three, was down there to make the stop. A 47-yard punt and a two-yard return for T.O. Sanders. Just underway at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, along with James Lofton and Bob Kessling, Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. Billy Jack Haskins coming back off a shoulder separation. They've shown a great deal of courage. And he'll run a lot of the option today because of that. From the 17-yard line with Williams, the lone setback. Play action fake, and he's looping it for Colvin. Incomplete, and back there covering Corey Noel. Fans thought there had been some contact, and Bill Curry also believes there was contact. You're right, there was contact, but it's all the way up and down the field. They run the play action fake in the backfield. Good play action by Billy Jack. But there's no separation between Coleman and the defensive back any time during the route. That's a hard one for the officials to call. Spoken by one of the all-time greats at wide receiver. You wanted to see some separation, right? You need some separation. You need to get him away from that white jersey. Mo Williams off the right side. Fumbled the football. It appears as if he's going to be ruled down prior to the fumble. It could be a very big break for Kentucky. Corey Noel was in on that stop. We mentioned Schellenberger, who will play fullback every now and then. Many times they'll go with a double tight end when Cross is joined by Darren Clark. And up front, Brandon Jackson and Jonas leaning on that right side, usually aid Mo Williams. And this is a freshman. You can look at his upper body. He doesn't have the arm development of an older player, but he started every ball game for the Wildcats this season. Third down and nine. Haskins over the middle to Antonio O'Farrell. Complete for a first down at the 30-yard line. Tyrone Hines was over there to make the stop. As you look at that Tennessee defense, Leonard Little is the playmaker. Eight sacks this year, and on the other side, Steve White has six. Hines leads the linebacking crew, and the secondary has really improved. Austin is a spiritual leader, and they get some help off the corner, don't they? And that's the senior, Deron Jenkins, the only senior back there starting for this ball club. Loves to play one-on-one -on -one coverage. He even uses that stand-up stance like Deion Sanders. Williams picks up two, maybe three yards, going off the right side, and as advertised, Deron Jenkins comes over to make the stop, the senior out of St. Louis. I would think that Kentucky is already pleased with what has happened in the first series and now this series offensively because they've moved the ball. They only allowed Tennessee one first down. They want to create a tempo in this ballgame. They just don't want Tennessee running up and down the field a la Tracky. Well, the numbers on Williams are incredible. He sets records just about every time he touches the ball here at Kentucky and is the lone setback here. Great drop for Haskins, looking outside to Tucker. And that's a first down beyond the 40 to the 42. Terry Fair makes the stop. Now, this is an incredible story. James Tucker 
was injured in the Georgia game, a game we had. Frankly, they didn't realize that he had injured himself as severely as he had. Well, what was interesting, he was injured right along the sideline. Bill Curry is over there. He sees all the blood on the ground, and he says, Tucker, Tucker, are you okay? And he said, Coach, it's just blood. Don't worry about it. They have installed a plate in his left eye and have been very concerned. You see he's wearing the visor because of the injury to that eye. First and 10 with the ball at the 42 for Kentucky. Williams, big hole, gets five. As that Kentucky offensive line plows through Tennessee's defensive front. Ron Green and Raymond Austin collaborate on the stuff. Now that may not be flashy, but watch the guard and the center, the left guard, get that push. Everybody's staying on their man, and that's the key to being able to run the ball because there's not a designated hole where Mo Williams is just going to hit. He's reading. He's seven yards off the line of scrimmage and able to read the offensive lineman's block. Kevin Coleman in motion. Tucker is the receiver to the lower portion of the screen. by Ron Green as he was able to spin away and pick up the extra yard. I was down on the field earlier before the game started. The field is just mushy enough to take away a little bit of the speed advantage that Tennessee might have defensively. We saw Mo break back to the outside right there. Maybe against a lesser team that doesn't have the great speed like Tennessee does, he's able to make the corner there, but still positive yardage once again. They have been anticipating rain here. Apparently it has held off, and that's good news for Kentucky. Haskins for Yeast, he drops the touchdown pass. Craig Yeast wide open by four steps beyond the nearest Tennessee defender. You know, that, that's one that's painful for me to watch because Yeast, state champion, freshman, 400-meter champion, open, wide open. You don't get much more open than this. The ball is thrown a little bit to his right shoulder, but there's nothing he could do to bring that ball in once it hits the ground. Leonard Little made Haskins pay. A little hello, how are you doing, and I'll be back from Leonard Little. Eight quarterback sacks this year. Second and ten. Haskins. And that one batted down. Tennessee does a lot of that through the course of the game. Had a couple of interceptions off tips, you'll recall, against Steve Tannehill in a game we televised on Jefferson Pilot Sports a few weeks back. Well, Billy Jack Haskins lists himself at six feet, one inches, but I was in the locker room, and I know I have on my 10-inch pumps, but that guy is under six feet tall. You know, he has that shoulder injury, and he showed me a pad that the trainers had given him to wear for the ball game, but he said, I can't wear that because every time I try and turn my shoulder to the left to look, my helmet, my face pass hits my shoulder. You know, James, he's uh, doing remarkably well for a quarterback who was held out of practice all of this week. He had no snaps during the course of preparation this week. Quick drop again, and there's the pressure. And that's what Tennessee will do for you. Jesse Sanders gets through the linebacker who has clawed his way back into the starting lineup since that South Carolina game. Senior out of Sebring, Florida. You know, Tim, we met with the coaches last night, and they assured us the one thing they weren't going to do was blitz the quarterback. <laughs> this was a skill blitz for me. They bring six rushers, and they just overpower the Kentucky offensive line, and they come up with the sack and stop Kentucky's drive. But a good drive for Kentucky to get it away from their end zone. Jimmy Carter punting it away. With the wind, angles are high for Summers, who takes it, and it's quickly knocked out of bounds. Down there to get him, Littleton Ward, a cornerback on the defensive end that has been pressed into duty with all of the injuries. 9.05 remaining in the opening quarter in Kentucky. This is a golden opportunity on a drop pass. In the regular season of college football, it has indeed been a pleasure for us to bring you these games in the Southeastern Conference. All with James Lofton and Bob Kessling on the sidelines, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. Tennessee's second possession from their 24-yard line. Peyton Manning checking off at the line of scrimmage. Rusk is coming on the blitz, and there's the pass complete. And holding on for dear life to Joey Kent is Keo Wilson. Peyton Manning has historically been a quarterback that most defensive coordinators are scared to death of blitzing. He is very wise back there, tutored well, both at home and in Knoxville. Yeah, but Dad has always said that I'm going to let the coaches coach him, but 
obviously from watching your dad being around professional football, growing up watching, he knows how to play the game. He's been coached very well at Tennessee. Second down and three. Chester Ford is in the slot, and it's Graham off the right side. Bouncing off a couple of tacklers. Finally brought down by Rusk. There's Poole right there on Dante Key. And Dante Key, like we said, is undersized, and his best chance is going to be on an outside rush where he can use his speed. First down and 10, split backs this time. Quick out. Taken in by Tyler. That's another freshman receiver we're seeing today as Lehman Boyd ushers him out of bounds. Greg Tyler, freshman from Baltimore. He, along with Andy McCullough, Benji Schuler, and Maurice Staley, will all see time today behind Kenton Nash. And that's a scary thought when you look at this guy and someone misses a tackle, because this guy is the fastest out of all of their receivers. I talked to Pat Washington, the wide receiver coach, before the ball game. He said, well, we've got so many guys, I thought I was going to get the red shirt someone, but they're all so good, they have to play now. First and 10 at the 46. Manning, with feet in his face, finds his wide at the 32 and there's an example of the poise of a Peyton Manning because Dante Key was coming right after it you know when you bootleg like this a lot of quarterbacks get ruffled when they see a defensive lineman out there who is supposed to go with the flow not Peyton Manning gives him a little head fake with the ball goes up in the air and once you get that guy up in the air he can't move once he goes up in the air he's dead Peyton Manning knows that completes the pass downfield they mark it at the 32-yard line out of the eye formation. This time, the running play off the left side. Wide open for Jay Graham. And he manages the 17-yard line. Lehman Boyd makes the stop, number 15. The junior out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, at strong safety. Watch Schellenberger come up trying to make the tackle, and he just overruns the play a little bit. What he really needs to learn is, is where his additional support is coming from. If you're the middle linebacker, your job is to stay in the middle and make that hit. Philip Fulmer, in his fourth year as head coach, looks on. And you look at the numbers inside the red zone, they have been outstanding. Only Florida and the SEC is better. Eric Lane, number five, with his first carry of the day, the junior out of East Orange, New Jersey. Imagine the Gators, who are playing Vandy today, they've only kicked three field goals all season. I mean, Spurrier just doesn't well, take three. They probably three. don't need a field goal <laughs> kicker. They're good enough where they could just go for two after every touchdown. By the way, Dave Rowe is working that game today, along with Paul Kennedy, some other areas of the Southeastern Conference, picking up that telecast. We'll no doubt be keeping you up to date on the score in that ball game. Off the right side, Graham again. Very nimble back there. Schellenberger aids in the tackle. He's a cutback runner, goes against the grain, and then will cut back on you many times. Very shifty, the junior out of Concord, North Carolina. Well, he got a good block that time from Eric Lane, the fullback, and they let Eric have a, a carry before that play, before you go in and, and knife down with a big defensive lineman. He told us last night that his offensive linemen are so good, it's a storied program for offensive linemen. They'll come back and tell him which way he should cut. Oh, yeah. You know, the offensive linemen tell you that anyway. Double tight ends. Manning gives himself some room and then throws it away. Again, some pressure coming there from Schlegel, 97, the junior out of Harahan, Louisiana. But Manning knew right away what he was going to do. He couldn't find anyone. Unload. You look at the career numbers on Peyton Manning, and the, think about it. Bobby Scott, who was Archie Manning's backup with the New Orleans Saints, is about only one pass away from seeing Archie's son pass him by. There's that cutback ability. Graham burrows down to about the two. You know, getting back to those career touchdown numbers, there's one number that was not up there. Peyton is tied with his dad for the number of touchdown <laughs> passes in a collegiate career. Archie threw 31 while he was at Southern Mississippi. Old Miss. Yeah. I, I believe, changed the school. <laughs> I believe uh, one area that uh, 
Peyton would rather not break one of his dad's records would be in running the football in. You know, I'm, I'm sure Archie has more running touchdowns. I don't think he's going to have to worry about that because he has so much talent around him. He doesn't have to worry about running the ball in. Three tight ends. Manning trying to loop it in there. Drop. One official had touchdown. And then as Pfeiffer hit the deck, just before he reached the back of the end zone, the ball fell loose. You know, that was about the only way that Peyton Manning could have gotten this ball in there. Because Pfeiffer starts turning around almost before he's run his route. He has his hand up as if he, as if he is open, but there's a defensive player right next to him. And Graham jumps up so high that he has to get the ball over him. It's as he's bringing the ball down from the original angle, you could see that when he brought the ball to the chest, that's when he lost possession. The field goal of 20 yards from Jeff Hall is good. And Tennessee has to settle for three. A couple of missed opportunities for both teams in this game. Volunteers lead it. We'll be back after this word from your local SEC station. Tennessee leading 3-0 on a Jeff Hall field goal of 20 yards. Keo Sanford second in all-time Kentucky numbers in kickoff return yards. 1,230 he and George Harris await. The kick from Jeff Hall. Out of Winchester, Tennessee, same hometown as Philip Fulmer, the head coach of the Volunteers. 5-18 now remaining in the first quarter, and it comes up to the up back. Number 51, Bob Holmberg, a linebacker, wraps that ball up and has an 11-yard return and gives Kentucky quality field position to open this drive. It looks like Bob may be keeping that ball also. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, you look at those numbers on Keo Sanford. It's amazing. He's only a sophomore right now. He has 1,200 yards already in his career. So that number is going to go out the window in a little while. Mm -hmm. Billy Jack Haskins brings up his troops at the 35-yard line. Well, nothing doing there for Mo Williams. Leonard Little, the first to get there. Defensive coordinator John Chavis told us uh, last night that there's only one player on the defense that's any faster than Leonard Little. Well, one of the things you want to do as a defensive player, you want to get your hands on the offensive man. That's exactly what he did. And he was in control right there. He was controlling, leaning, and he got into the backfield. I don't think Williams thought he would get off the blocker that quickly because he saw the blue on the white, and then all of a sudden he saw Little right in his face. Only Deron Jenkins is faster than Little on that Tennessee defense. Here's the play fake off the option, and wide open is Coleman. The freshman sets free inside the 10. That is the same play that they used earlier in the game with the bumping, the same play that they used trying to get the ball to Craig East. They went to the barrel again, and this time there was a Kentucky Wildcat wide open down the field. The only thing, Kevin Coleman is going to hear a little noise about being run down by Mr. Noel. Torrey Noel, the sophomore from Memphis, finally there to run him down. 57 yards on the completion, and again, it was the option fake that keyed that play. touchdown Kentucky takes the lead so you run out of your shoe for your first score of the day Schellenberger comes around the center and around the guard who is pulling, and he gets a great block. Brandon Jackson, number 25, and Schellenberger, number 45, 49, get key blocks on that touchdown run. Over half of their scores have come via Mo Williams. And again, as he so oftentimes does, breaks the initial tackle. That's what separates him from the rest. His 15th rushing touchdown. One blow can't stop Mo. 
7-3 Kentucky with the lead and Jefferson Pilot Sports coverage of the Southeastern Conference concludes next week in the interstate rivalry between the Vanderbilt Commodores and these same volunteers. 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. We look forward to you joining us for that game. Brian Savinsky will kick off for Kentucky. Terry Fair is back deep at his five-yard line. So Kentucky operating with the wind in this quarter does have one touchdown. Could have two at this stage. Let's go down to Bob Kessling. Bob? Good timing for Kentucky today. They issued this full-color poster of Mo Williams, hyping him for Hall All-Star consideration, and he deserves it. On the back of the poster, list all his credentials and what he's accomplished so far this season and in his Kentucky career. It's been a good one, and Mo Williams off to a good start today against Tennessee. Columbus, Georgia, Spencer High School, but he grew up in the Kentucky area, and that's one of the reasons why he chose to come back here. Well, his mom went to school here. She got her degree. Marisa got her degree in nursing from the University of Kentucky, so it was only natural for son to follow mom back to school. First down, 10, Tennessee. Volunteers go with three wideouts. Graham, and this is an inspired group from the Big Blue. He's dropped for a loss. The first to get to him, Dante Key, aided by the other defensive end, Jason Thomas, 96. Key takes a stance out wide, like I said, and, and watch. The, the fullback cuts him down forward, but he still gets back up off the ground, and that allows Jason Thomas to get the pursuit from the backside and aid him on the tackle. Kyler has come in at one wide out at the bottom of your screen, number 80. Second and 11. Manning shoots it, picked off. Lehman Boyd has it. It was intended for Marcus Nash, and the Wildcats now have the ball at the Tennessee 35. And after 123 consecutive completions coming in, Manning finally picked off. And that's Boyd's third interception of the year. When we see what Kentucky's answer is to Tennessee's spread offense, it's to rush three men, drop eight in coverage, and make Peyton Manning throw the ball to the eight-man zone. The three deep, five underneath coverage is going to be tough on him. Haskins, a naked boot, open to O'Farrell. And a gain of eight down to the 27-yard line of Tennessee. You can give a lot of credit to Bill Curry, whether he keeps his job or not, for assembling both Elliot Uzelak, a former head coach as his offensive coordinator, and Mike Archer, one of the brightest minds as a defensive coordinator, now with this Kentucky staff. This is a far different staff than he's had in prior years. Philip Fulmer looks on, very concerned with what's going on here in the first quarter. Second down and two. down inside the 25 to the 23 Leonard Little making the stop you know we're also seeing some change ups from Kentucky on their offense in that last set they had of course Mo Williams a single back but they used three wide receivers and one tight end and what that does is it spreads the defense out and it actually gives Williams more room to run the only thing that they don't have when they don't have that tight end on the backside is they don't have backside protection for the cutback so it's important for Mo when he has the three wide receiver to hit the hole quickly, don't cut back. First and ten, ball at the 23. Coleman in motion. Williams inside the 20 near the 19 yard line. After Antonio O'Farrell made that reception, a player so back, he hit the deck. He's down on the sidelines on the Kentucky side, injured. You know, the, the Kentucky linemen are just coming off. They're getting on them. You know, these aren't flashy runs. There's nothing pretty about a four-yard run. But what Mo Williams does is he wears you down. They're going to keep giving him the ball and giving it to him. If he can rush the ball 35 to 40 times today, they have a good chance of staying in this ball game with Tennessee. Second down and six. Williams, there's a gap. But there's that closing speed we talk up so often from Tennessee. Shane Burton playing that tackle spot, the senior out of Catalba, North Carolina, in there to make the tackle. Bob Kessling tells us that the wind is really whipping down there, and anytime you see that kind of extension from the flags, that tells you it's gusting up 
about 25 to 30 miles per hour. And it's two Kentuckys back here in the first quarter. And they still have 50-plus seconds of that win to work with. Third down and four. And if they don't get a first down here, it might be a good time to call timeout and use the wind at their back if they do need to kick a field goal. Asking for Tucker. Trying that button hook move. May have gotten in the first down. Right in front of Terry Fair. That's the old... Uh, you go down five yards, and then you curl in, and then after you catch it, spin for him. You know, Tucker's an interesting story. We talked about his courage and his toughness playing with the eye injury, but he was also a linebacker when this season started. And during spring ball, he went out, he played wide receiver, and made some progress there, and now he's fallen into a starting role there. He's almost a mismatch against the smaller Tennessee corners because he is a guy who goes 204 pounds on a six-foot, two-inch frame. Clock continues to run, 20 seconds remaining, sixth play of this drive after the Lehman Boyd interception. Williams, nothing doing. Still manages to get back to the line of scrimmage. Jesse Sanders and Ron Green make the tackle. And the quarter will come to an end, it appears. Very seldom do you talk about a great run being one yard or back to the line of scrimmage. But that was a great run, just getting back to the line of scrimmage. Bill Curry and his team playing expired football here in the Commonwealth for a near capacity crowd in the battle for the beer barrel. They lead through one. Bill Curry's Wildcats trying to cash in off Tennessee's turnover. Peyton Manning rarely intercepted this year, throwing one over the middle, picked off by Lehman Boyd. And the Wildcats, who have already dropped one sure score from Craig East, could be leading 14-3. Second down and 10 as we open the second quarter. Got a blitz coming here and an audible from Billy Jack. Goes to Williams. Doing his best to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Tori Noel makes the stop. You take a look at the Lee Apparel first quarter stats. And Kentucky's passing yardage, certainly noteworthy. I think the key stat, though, to the first quarter, eight minutes and 50 seconds time of possession for the Wildcats to just 6'10 of Tennessee. And that's what Kentucky has to do. They have got to dominate the time of possession and also move the chains as often as possible. You know, obviously, going against Tennessee, the one thing you want to do, you want to keep Peyton Manning on the sideline and getting cooler as the game progresses. Third and 10. Askins, play fake to Williams, sack, fumbled, but recovered by Kentucky. And it's leaning, I believe, that landed on top of it. No, it's Barry Jones. 69, Barry Jones, the senior out of Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, allows the Wildcats at least a chance for three here. And another big play by Leonard Little and Steve White. Little coming straight up the middle, beating two men. Steve White beating his man, causing the fumble. They keep track of big plays, and these guys are running away with the big plays defensively for the Tennessee Volunteers this season. This will be a 33-yard attempt from Brian Johnson. Savinsky has struggled this year. This is into the wind, and good. 33 yards, but into a very brisk wind, which we documented a few moments ago. Kentucky had it in their favor until the second quarter got underway. So that's a very important field goal for that young man. Johnson, just a sophomore out of Ripley, West Virginia. And I think Johnson would have much rather kicked that ball at the other end. Oh, yeah. And that ball started dying when it got near the uprights. I thought it was almost going to get blown outside the right upright, but it snuck right inside of it. Bob Kessling downstairs, Bob. Bill Curry challenged his Wildcats this week for this game with Tennessee. In fact, all week long, as the players went to their dressing stalls at the McNutter Center here, there were signs at their stalls saying, Tennessee, Kentucky, 93-94, Tennessee 100, Kentucky nothing. It reminded the players every single day that they've been embarrassed the last two years in the series, hoping they would bounce back. There's also a special thing at the Nutter Center. There's a K in the middle of the locker room. It's been there since 1987. Nobody has ever walked on that K out of respect for the program. Bill Curry says, you have to have pride in your program. Have pride and don't step on the K. Don't ever step on my K. Well, Brian Johnson probably could get away with it. That's his first 
field goal of the year. Now Savinsky will kick off, and it's a pooch kick coming down to the 25-yard line, and again, an up back comes away with it. Al Wilson, and he's up to the 37-yard line. You know, when you're going to kick a ball like that that's high up in there, what you really need to do is you get one of your sprinters out there, and he can get down and almost intercept that ball. What's funny is the receiving team can call a fair catch in that instant if they're worried about someone getting down and hitting them because you can hit them before. It's not like a punt where you have to let them catch the ball. Philip Fulmer's team prides itself on run-pass balance. And now we'll see how Manning responds to that interception he threw moments ago. Quick hitch to Kyler, the freshman wide receiver. And the Kentucky defense responds. Littleton Ward, the left cornerback, sophomore out of Lexington, makes the stop. Around the SEC is presented by Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm. The Iron Bowl today, Alabama and Auburn, 60th game, but only the third time at Jordan-Hare. And the Tigers have won both of those prior meetings. And of course, Alabama waiting for the NCAA appeals process to come public. The president, Roger Sayers, and uh, Lynn Tuckett. That was tipped into the air. And incomplete. Dante Key got a hand on that one. Theo Wilson nearly came away with it. Another near pick, and the pass was intended for Joey Kent. George Harris was almost able to break on that ball. Dante Key does a good job finding out where the pass is coming from and getting his hands up, and George Key, the senior, who's moved into the starting lineup for today, almost came up with a crucial interception. And George Harris, senior out of Oakland, California, he and Keel Wilson being called upon to play so much with the losses of guys like Carlos Collins, Van Hiles, and Stephen Hall. Third down and six. Manning to Kyler. That's the first down near midfield. Right in front of Schellenberger, the middle linebacker. Littleton Ward also in the area. It's an interesting time where the postseason is concerned. All of these rivalry games being played this weekend and next weekend. So much in the balance. Uh, Alabama is hopeful that by November 27th, they will have an idea as to the penalties being lightened from the NCAA. It could be scholarships or it could be a bowl chance this season. Graham wrapped up by Slagle, 97. Gain of about two for Jay Graham. Kentucky does a good job in just making a mush of everything on the offensive line right there. They don't really give Graham a hole to run through. Everyone's there. They're able to get hands in on him and make a nice gang tackle and bring him down. Just underway, second quarter, 12-25 and counting. Jim Brando, James Lofton, Bob Kessling from Lexington, Kentucky, where the Wildcats have a 10-3 lead over number four, Tennessee. Graham, once he gets past that initial line of scrimmage, Harris makes the stop. George enjoying himself a little too much. Better watch out for that celebration rule after that tackle. What's really important here is that Kentucky limits them. They get a nice hole to run through. Once again, Schellenberger picks the wrong side for the middle linebacker to start his charge. But George Harris does a good job in bringing down a very dangerous guy in the open field. Third down, a yard to go for Tennessee. Graham could pop it. Harris gets him again, corrals him at the 34, and more verbiage being passed between the two after the play. Well, Jay Graham letting him know about it. He wasn't happy with the way Harris stood on top of him after that tackle just to play a go. Graham shows his strength here. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage, and then he runs through Reggie Ruff. Well, once again, there's George Harris, the senior, and I think Coach Curry has invited him over to the sideline. He had some words with him right before that, lap, before this started this play. He's kind of toned it down just a little bit. Early in the season, he would have been flagged. First and 10 play fake. Incomplete, intended for Kyler. And he ran right into the post. Well, that stings. Did that ever happen to you in your career? I wasn't that fast. <laughs> <laughs> they have a slot formation to the left side. One receiver comes in, and he draws the free safety up. And that allows 
Tyler to get to the post. Ball's just a little overthrown. Manny has this win behind him on the 34-yard line. They only had 44 yards to work with. He threw that ball 48 yards. One setback. That's Graham on second and 10. Tennessee trying to answer Kentucky's score. And Graham fights his way down to the 26-yard line. David Snarden, 48. Senior out of Louisville's Mail High School makes the tackle. Aided by Reggie Rusk. Once again, they're doing just good enough of a job up front to slow him down and not let him get a full head of steam up while he's headed into that secondary. And that allows the secondary enough time to come up and make the tackle. Jay Graham already 59 yards. He's having an outstanding day so far. Late changes defensively by Kentucky. Tight end look from Tennessee. Bobbling it behind the line of scrimmage. Graham is dropped. Reggie Rusk is the first to get there. You know, Tim, I think this is an interesting call right here because if you try this, it's a 47 yard field goal. It's quite a distance, even with the wind behind you. He never had full possession of the ball, and then Rusk met him in a hurry with help from Schellenberger. Jeff Hall, freshman out of Winchester, does have a game winner this year against Georgia. From this distance, he has not been that strong, but he does have a lot of wind behind him, and he gets it with ease. 46 yards for Jeff Hall. His winning field goal against Georgia earlier this year on the game's final play was the first for a Tennessee team since the Iowa game in the kickoff classic in 87. That's one for Philip Fulmer's hometown. 10-6, Kentucky with the lead. 9.50 remaining here in the second quarter as the Wildcats have held Tennessee out of the end zone. They've been held to three each time. Mike Archer, who's done a remarkable job, former head coach at LSU, respected by many, included by that man, Philip Fulmer and Archer has done it by using linebackers that know how to cover their area. And it's the bend don't break philosophy. Wider than the widest and deeper than the deepest. Tutored under Bill Arnsparker at LSU and of course comes from Miami as well. Played collegiately there and that's been his style for some time. Not a bad uh, man to copy or emulate. Florida with a 7-0 lead on Vanderbilt. That's in the second quarter. That's the other game being televised over many of these Jefferson Pilot sports stations in the Palmetto State, South Carolina, with the early edge over Clemson in that rivalry. Penn State leading Michigan early. Well, we could have some surprises. Everyone trying to pencil in certain teams Everyone for certain bowl games. for that Notre Dame Air Force yeah. for them. Indeed, particularly in Tennessee. On first down, Williams has one eight-yard touchdown run today. Stopped by Ron Green. A uh, Gallion plays very well along that line and at linebacker. The critical thing in this ball game is field position. And for Kentucky right now, on their own 20-yard line, going into the wind, they really do need to get some first downs. They cannot afford to have a three-and-out series where they're punting the ball and then the Volunteers taking over close to midfield. You're right. The Tennessee, even when they're struggling offensively, forces you to move the football. They force you to score each time you touch it. On second and ten, Haskins. Throwing it away. There was a mix-up, it appeared, between he and Yeast on that route. And then he felt... Steve White coming from that defensive end spot, and he decided to get rid of it. Well, it was just a two-wide receiver pattern, and sending two guys out, they're either going to be open because you fooled them with the play fake, but that time, Tennessee secondary was not fooled at all. They're going against one of the top guys over there. Just played the coverage, stayed with his man. I really believe that Haskins threw that ball away more than there might have been a mistake on the receivers. Three wide receivers now. Haskins is 5 of 9 for 93 yards through the air. Quick drop. Gets rid of it, and Mo Williams has got it. Look out. First down, Kentucky. Tyrone Hines makes the stop, and Haskins was quite resourceful on that play. I almost thought that Haskins held the ball a little too long in the pocket and showed a lot of courage there because... 
Little and White have put pressure on him so far. And then we see Shane Burton just getting pushed past the pocket. And this is something that I know a lot of pro scouts drool over when they see a running back like Mo Williams come out of the backfield and catch the football. There's that pressure you were talking about. He had Green wrapping him up and Galleon on the way. Haskins now 6 of 10. Williams. Watch the speed to the corner from Tennessee. See, it's so good. Against so many teams, Mo Williams can afford to get to that corner, but the Volunteers will close anytime you begin moving east to west. Deron Jenkins makes the tackle. You know, there are, there are two schools of thought when you're talking to wide receivers. Do you try and cut people and get them on the ground, or do you stay up and stay in their face? I really believe that a wide receiver should stay up. Number one, you don't want to get your uniform dirty, but it also allows the running back to decide which way he wants to go. And the defensive secondary for Tennessee is good enough where if you do cut them and knock them on the ground, they're going to bounce right back up. Pick up of two, second and eight. James Tucker in motion. Watch the reverse to Yeast. Leonard Little did. And how? He snuffed that one out immediately. And the sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, wrapped up Yeast without much of a problem. You, know, you need a very nice mesh when you have a play action think and almost tossing that ball out there let Leonard Little see that hey the quarterback still has it. Leonard Little's a, a tough guy to get around even if you do fake him a little bit he has enough speed to get back and recover and get in the play. Darren Clark the tight end 88 hobbled off after that play. Third down and 20 now for Kentucky. Haskins. Steve White gets the sack. He and Little have combined a couple of times. He'll get credit for that one alone. Senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. 6'2", 246. Steve White just unloads on Haskins right there. See him lower his shoulder to get that momentum and to turn that corner. That's something that Bruce Smith for the Buffalo Bills is great at. And he turns the corner on Barry Jones right there. Just amazing to see someone that big accelerate into the quarterback. It's scary. Most in the conference, and most of them off the Tennessee corner at defensive end. And that punt into that wind is just, I mean, they need the roll. They need all of this roll to get any distance whatsoever. As Jimmy Carter could do very little with that into that gusting wind. It's a 25-yard punt, and that's with a 10-yard roll, a very kind one for Kentucky. 6.05 remaining in the half. Look at that score. Kentucky by four pass rusher he broke an arm against South Carolina this is his first action since junior out of Cincinnati Ohio and Trey Teague has come in to replace Jarvis Rito at left tackle for the Volunteers Mark Levine is in the game the freshman tailback 19 and he gets it picks up a couple of yards Marvin Major among others in on the stop Mark Jacobs I beg your pardon, making that stop. Number 99 in blue, the freshman out of Waynesboro, Georgia. You know, it's funny, a, a player like Sufi comes back into the ball game and he has four sacks in the first four games. He has that big cast on his right arm. And you know, the offensive players are more worried about that cast. They don't want to get hit by that thing. Look at the rushing yards. 64 for Tennessee. Much more than you usually anticipate. bounds near the 33 yard line of Kentucky. Bob Kessling's got more on that offensive line. Bob? You know, as, as productive as Tennessee's offense has been this year, Philip Homer says the one thing he's really been disappointed in is that they haven't been able to run the ball consistently all season long, although Graham has had this big year. A moment ago, Philip Homer came over to the offensive line when they're on the bench, and he challenged them to take control of this game, dominate the line of scrimmage, and let's run the football. First and ten, there's the quick pitch to Levine. Off the left side, he picks up five, maybe six. David Snarden, the senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, in on the stop. The announcers for today's game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference 
and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Second down and four. Manning. Right through the hands of Nash. Well, he's had some drops today. Nash a couple of times. You know, I got a chance to talk to Nash yesterday at the hotel and a very confident young man and was looking forward to, to going deep against one of the defensive backs. And I asked him, I said, well, which one would you like to go deep against? He said, anybody. <laughs> this is a controlled passing game. Generally, it's the volunteers receivers that will break tackles to make big plays for Manning. Four wide outs this time. Complete. It'll be ruled a trap at the 15-yard line. Here is Price, number 37 in white. And that'll bring up a fourth down. That five-receiver formation is maybe the most dangerous look that the Volunteers present to Kentucky. And it had the Kentucky coaches most concerned because what it does, it brings all that speed in the ball game. And Kentucky really wants to stay with their base personnel on defense. Played Phillip, it very well that time. Well, did you see Philip Fulmer over there, James? He is upset. That it's, is, that, it's that orange. Yep. 44 <laughs> yard field goal try for Hall. This time he hooks it. No good. You know, we were commenting on his last kick, it went perfectly straight. And that one, he lined it up and he said, I'll kick this one straight too, and he gets a little hook. Now, he's gone from orange to red in just the last 15 or 20 seconds, hasn't he? <laughs> 4.37 remaining. He wants it to go straight. Oh, but it hooks. Everything else. Well, the loss of Bubba Miller may be a major factor in today's game. Now, here's Haskins with that option. And generally, that's a quarterback sweep. He very rarely will pitch off that option. Defensive coordinator John Chavis told us that last night, and this was clearly all Billy Jack. So watch when Billy Jack runs this. He sees a crease right up here behind the tight end cross, and he cuts straight up behind him. You know, and I have to believe that he's thinking about that left shoulder and getting that right shoulder in position to take the blow. Saw Bill Curry there, and this performance, at least up until now, could do a great deal to serve him well in the offseason. He's going down, passes it incomplete. Both Marcus Cross and a, a wide receiver were in the general area of that pass. So spend New Year's Day at the Outback Bowl in Tampa. Send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to the address on your screen and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare by Continental Airlines. The winner will be announced during our Vanderbilt, Tennessee game next week. you got to be 21 years of age or older to enter. Well, this is a guy that once coached James Lofton in his early days in Green Bay. That's right. He was the offensive line coach up there my first and second year. And uh, you know, when he moved on to take a head coaching job, I was surprised. I thought he liked it in Green Bay. Yees has it for a first down at the 48-yard line. I'll tell you what, that makes that freshman feel so much better. Had a chance on a big play earlier, and he has that little nose bandage on. Just a simple square out, pushes up the field, makes his break, the ball is delivered on time, and he makes sure that he has it, and it's right in front of the senior quarterback. The receiver coach that you were alluding to earlier. Four minutes remaining in the game. First down and 10. Williams stopped by Little. Two, maybe three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Four you know, minutes remaining in the half. And Bob Kessling coming up at halftime. It really seems like they've had a lot of success when they've been able to spread out the Tennessee defense with that three wide receiver set, one tight end. Right now, I've been looking down on the sidelines, and Darren Clark, who is their normal starting tight end, along with Marcus Clark, has been out of the ball game for a little while so we're going to have to keep our eyes open to see if Darren Clark can come back in he's also the long snapper coach. you know you look at all these freshman receivers and uh, it does bode well for the future of Tim Couch if he were to choose Kentucky the outstanding high school quarterback and Mo Williams could be back Askins sack that's a coverage sack Leonard Little comes through to make that stop you know, he really does a good job 
in trying to let the routes develop down the field because there are a lot of quarterbacks when they realized the athletes that Tennessee has rushing them would have gotten happy feet a lot earlier. But Billy Jack Haskins is trying to let the play come to fruition and let everything happen in front of him before throwing the ball out there and putting it up to grab. Suma Sims is coming to the game, number nine for Kentucky. Got a wide out. The screen out to Williams. Got a couple of great blocks. He's got a lot of room to run in front of him. Noel is the only one that can get him. At the two-yard line, what a remarkable set of blocks he got with a marker down at the two. Well, that's going to be a face mask penalty because Noel goes right up and grabs him right around the head and doesn't let go. Brandon Jackson and Jonas Leaning particularly made awesome blocks on Craig King that just opened that sideline for Mo Williams. You know, one of the things that you want to try and teach your linemen when they go out on a screen, opposed to the receivers, you want them to try and get the guys on the ground. Half the distance of the goal from the end of the run, first down. We, we saw the two blocks there, and Mo Williams just wants to get in that end zone, but you get a good face mask grab. Yeah. You know, that may keep them out of the end zone for the next four plays, so it may not be a bad penalty if they can keep them out of the end zone. First and goal, McLaurin is coming to the game for Williams, 21. Ray McLaurin with a marker down. Well, if this is against Kentucky, that'll really hurt them, and it should be. Tennessee is pretty happy. Jonathan Brown. These are the kinds of mistakes that teams with losing records tend to make. Well, and it, it's really not what is characteristic of the Kentucky Wildcats. They are the least. We have an illegal formation the against the offense. The offensive team only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Let's see if we can see it. Hard to tell from that vantage point. And a timeout called by Kentucky. Well, we saw South Carolina make the same er error early in the game against Tennessee. It led to a field goal try that was blocked and returned for a touchdown. And if Kentucky can get a win today, they'll need a touchdown or at least three with this particular possession. You don't want this kind of opportunity to be blown. Well, and if you turn it over, Tennessee, on the last time they had the ball, they started on their own 47-yard line, not able to get any points out of it at all when they missed the field goal. And then Coach Fulmer goes wild on the sideline because, obviously, when you get the ball on your side of the field, you can get on your tiptoes and see the end zone. You believe that you need to be there. And his offense has not produced. They were upset. Even though they had won their last ball game, 42 to nothing, Coach Cutlip, the offensive coordinator, said, hey, we have not played well offensively. We touched on Tim Couch, the outstanding quarterback prospect in high school in this great state. And among other items at halftime, Bob Kessling will touch on him. Bob? Yeah, we will, Tim. We got highlights of his game last night as he went up against Belfry. He plays in Leslie County, and he set that high school passing record. We'll also look at scores from around the SEC, as this is a very important day. And uh, also we'll check scores from around the country. All of that coming up in just a few moments at halftime. 2.15 remaining. Kentucky with a first down at the Tennessee six-yard line. Schellenberger is in the game as Williams dots the eye. Play fake. Haskins trying to do it on his own. Nothing doing. Again, the speed, just too big a factor for Tennessee defensively. Deron Jenkins makes the tackle. And uh, from the looks of Billy Jack, that may have been a bust of blood. Yeah, because I didn't see anyone out in the pattern who, who would have been the beneficiary of a play fake. So maybe there was just a mistake in the backfield, but they, they didn't lose anything drastically on that play. They lost it down, and that's it. Now they need to go and get it right. You see the Cats offense today inside that red zone. They would like to get a touchdown rather than a field goal here. And they've chosen to spread the formation out again. They have the three wide receivers in the ballgame. And another 
by that call. They were right up against the 25 second clock right there. They were late getting the play in and some confusion. This is again, we talked about it. Teams that have a, a difficult pass that they're trying to overcome. They've struggled, lost some games they thought they should have won. How many times do you see them get in positions like this and panic begins to set in? You could just see in the eyes of Williams and Haskins that, that there were some problems there. Well, in 1981, this uh, volunteer team took on Kentucky in a very important game. There was snow on the ground that day. The Wildcats were looking for their second win of the year. Randy Jenkins went to work with two touchdown passes. This one 12 yards to put the Cats up 14 to 10 before the half. Then Jenkins' second touchdown finished the scoring to Rick Massey as Kentucky beat Tennessee 21 to 10. The bluegrass was a little white that day. Just a little flurry. That's not really snow. <laughs> Not the kind you remember. That was just uh, 14 years ago. I remember that day. Mm -hmm. the Wildcats now with a second down and six with a minute 29 remaining in the half. And they're late getting back out onto the field. The play clock has already started. Half the players want to huddle. Half want to go straight to the line of scrimmage. So they have 10 seconds once he gets under the center. So the play clock. It's already down to five. Gives it up to Williams. Not much. About the only thing they get out of that is a better angle, provided uh, the next play goes nowhere for their field goal try. There's a little bit of confusion going on here. They had a great look on the play where they ran out of time and had to call the timeout. There was no one covering the tight end in the previous play. Now Tennessee wants to talk it over and figure out exactly what they want to do defensively. And you see Kevin Ramsey, the defensive back coach there, discussing it with his guys. As I pointed out, they had left the tight end uncovered on the previous play where Kentucky had to call timeout. So they're trying to get their assignments down down here because what Kentucky has done, they haven't shown this before with the three wide receivers on the five-yard line. That spreads the field. You would think Mo Williams would be the obvious choice, but putting the ball up here, you only have 15 yards to work. It's imperative that you stick close to the manner you're supposed to be on. This kind of decision, James, when you're struggling and uh, so much is at stake for your uh, staff and for your team, and with Bill Curry, let's face it, let's, let's not bury our heads in the sand. This is a very important game, not only to, to possibly win, but to to play competitively and have a chance for your team. I think you look at a play like this, a third and six after a timeout, the way he plays this offensively has a lot to do with the mindset of the fans and influential alumni. And you also realize how critical the tackle by Noel is to bring down Mo Williams. And I mentioned the face mask, that may not have been a waste of penalty. Third and six from the six. Runs the option to Williams. Touchdown, Kentucky. Haskins is holding that left shoulder pretty close, but now that he realizes Mo Williams is in end zone, that shoulder's feeling a little bit better. I'd say Coach Curry going with the three wide receiver set and running the option into the boundary, one over a few of the alumni. I would love to say I told him to do that, but I did. <laughs> the extra point is good. And uh, when the rest of the country gets a look at this score, there will be a knee-jerk reaction from a number of places. 17-6, Kentucky with 1.15 left in the half. A great pitch out by Haskins, holding the ball until the last moment. The only thing that I would want Mo Williams to do is have that ball in the left hand so he can use his right arm to ward off the defender. That's something that he may learn in the next couple years by the time he takes it to the next level. His 16th touchdown rushing. Mo Williams thanking the lineman. As you see, Haskins being worked on that shoulder. He did take a mean pop on that play. And I bet they're asking him if he has that pad on. 
Well, they're looking at the eyes. That's usually the signal for concussion, but, you know, the way he came off the field, he looks okay. Jerry's nodding his head. He's saying, yes, I've got two years of eligibility left. <laughs> One final remaining. Let's go down to Bob Kessling. Bob? Tim, if you look at the young lady to the right of Haskins, that's Ant uh, Andrea Roth. She's a graduate assistant here at the University of Kentucky on the training staff. Al Green and Sue Stanley are the head trainers here. They're off today because of the family emergency. There's another trainer, John Moore, he had another death in the family, so he's not here. So Andrea Roth, the, reg the uh, graduate assistant, now is the head trainer today. So everybody has to stay up and, and fill in when somebody's needed. Very fair with the return. Stopped by George Harris, gets it up to the 35-yard line. So Tennessee now with a couple of timeouts with which to work. Well, no doubt, try to be as aggressive as possible because suddenly the Wildcats are up 11 and have cashed in with two touchdowns in this game. You see Mike Archer has made his way down. The defensive coordinator out of the box and down on the sidelines preparing for halftime. Make from Manning. Going long for Joey King. Incomplete. Overthrown. And again, we touch on that wind. When you have it, you may throw it maybe two or three yards further than you anticipate. Neiman Boyd and Reggie Russ take them inside. You tell them, this guy has a great arm. I want you deeper than anybody that they have on the field. Do not get sucked up on the play action fake. That's exactly what Kentucky wants in this situation. They want to keep the wide receivers in front of them, force them to go the length of the field on the short passes. The people who are critical in this area are the three rush linemen. Kurt Soupy's back in, Dante Key is in, and Mike Slagle's in. What they have to do, they have to keep constant pressure on Manny, even though there are only three guys rushing. Third and three for Peyton. Over the middle to Jay Gray. 49. Watson stops on the first down with 49 seconds remaining. Tennessee hustles back up to the line. They do have two timeouts remaining. That pass is overthrown. Payton was forced to unload that one a little more quickly than he would have liked. Dante Key providing the heat. And that is a great effort by Dante Key. When you only have three guys rushing the pass, you have five linemen pass protecting for him, so they can double up. But Dante Key didn't take the easy way out, which a lot of linemen do in this situation. They'll play one play, take a play off. That time he put enough pressure on him. He had a man open. He's able to get him to overthrow the ball. Second down and 10. Incomplete another drop. Joey Kent. Now, this Volunteers team played Oklahoma State after the win over South Carolina, then had a week off. I'm getting the feeling not only do they not appear to be as prepared mentally, but there may be some off-week rust on this team. Philip Bulmer was concerned about that coming in. But David Cutliff, the offensive coordinator, seemed to think that the work that they got in, the sharpness that they got back in their passing game, was going to show today. But so far, I really have to credit Kentucky on defense. Third and ten. Manning steps up. Rules it for a first down. At the 33-yard line, Joey Kent reels that one in. Rust was there. 32 seconds left in the timeout called by the Volunteers. They have one remaining. You see Phillip pointing out that he still does have the one timeout left. You know, you look at Tennessee's situation, we've talked about it, how important it is for them to impress because they're waiting for some help from Florida State against Florida from Air Force against Notre Dame where the bowl situation is concerned, you go out and you play a game against the Kentucky, and it's uh, highly competitive. Now you have to be concerned about possibly dropping in the polls because the Northwestern continues to impress. 
with well, each passing game. And I also think that Tennessee is the type of team who they understand what their position is, and they also look at the teams that they're playing and realize that they've handled them pretty well in the past. I think they may be overlooking how good Kentucky's playing today. Let's go down to Bob Kessling. Bob? Tim, you remember when we had Kentucky against South Carolina, Mike Archer was talking about how he was trying to confuse Steve Tannehill, and he had a terrific a, a bunch of uh, success doing that. Today, Archer tried to do the same thing against Manning. He knows Manning is a very smart quarterback. So far, I don't know if it's so much the Kentucky defense or Tennessee just not executing. Yeah, I think there's some rush there. I really do. From the 33. Manning going to the corner. Incomplete. Joey Kent running out of terrain. Reggie Rust still back there verbalizing after the play. The, the Wildcats had better be concerned. They have softened the taunt rule and the and the celebration rule to some extent late in the season. It's become a bit more liberal as the season has worn on. But there have been a couple of instances in this game, particularly with George Harris early, working on Jay Graham. Very good of a call. Second and ten. Number 22, the sophomore out of Mariana, Florida. Nice change of pace there by the Kentucky defense, going with a blitz and still playing zone coverage behind it, bringing five guys and still playing a six-man, two under four deep zone behind it. You know, I've got to wonder, what exactly is the rule for intentional grounding? Because there's really nobody in the area unless you figure he's throwing at the down mark. Mm -hmm. It's a judgment call. Down 10, five wide outs again for Manning. Nearly picked off by Russ. And incomplete. And the Kentucky defense continues to bother Peyton Manning. They really haven't, and with just the minimum of pass rushing. I have to take my hat off to Dante Key, Mike Slagle. Good in putting good pressure on them when they're going against everyone else. Now, Russ very easily could have taken this one in. Well, that's why those guys play defense. <laughs> now, Jeff Hall has come back into the game. And another timeout called. This one by Kentucky, their last of the half. And they will uh, try to ice Hall, who does have that win to work with. Not as gusty as it was earlier in the half. Well, with the great basketball heritage that Kentucky has, maybe one of the guys who's playing last night <laughs> could come over here and give us a middle jumper. Don't forget, coming up next week, more of the Volunteers. They take on the Commodores of Vanderbilt. 12.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 Central. Over most of these Lee SEC Jefferson Pilot Sports Stations. Hall has connected a couple of times today from 20 and 46. And missed a 44-yard. You know, when Hall be. was in high school, he hit a 62-yarder in both his sophomore and junior years. Yes. This will be... So this is a chip shot for him. This will be a 50-yard try. Jason Price will hold. Now, remember, Jason Price ran a fake against South Carolina to close the half. For a touchdown. It's good. He puts it through this time, 50 yards, his longest, and very meaningful for the Volunteers as they close the gap to 17-9 with seven ticks remaining in the half. Hall didn't hit that one as well as what he hit the 47-yarder, but it, it's straight enough, and there's enough wind in this stadium to just barely ease it over the uprights. He had been having some problems with blocks earlier, and he realized that it was his... Uh, Plant foot that he had a little too close to the ball. Worked on it a great deal in practice and he's now connected on three of four tries today. He had a block in that game with South Carolina. 17 to 9 with seven seconds left. But the Wildcats have really done a job against this Tennessee offense. Highly prepared. Has prepared for a matchup against 
an offense like Tennessee's as I've seen this season. They, they really have. They've come into the ball game with a plan, and they've executed it very well so far. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments that Tennessee makes at halftime to try and counter. Keep the ball away from Bob Holberg. <laughs> <laughs> this will be Sanford with the return. One second left, so there will be time for one play. You look at the volunteers' circumstances for the postseason. As we touched on at the top, they do need help in many respects nationally. But with respect to the uh, the bowl circumstances, they, they really need the help from Air Force tonight against Notre Dame. An option team. Most people in Knoxville believes could give the Irish some trouble and get them into the alliance. But through one half, the big blue is turning Tennessee orange awfully blue with a 17-9 lead in the first half. Bob Kessling has our halftime coming up. Loss and then deferred to open the game, so they do have possession as we get underway here in the second half. Paul's boot is short, taken by Sanford at the 10. Sanford gets away. One last block from Harris. Down at the 34. George Harris shielded his man and did not pick up the block in the back, which aided him, and then finally Hall hauled him down. That's the difference when you recruit kids who have high SAT scores. They don't make bad mental errors like that. But Sanford does a great job. They have him by one leg, and he runs right out of that, heads up the sideline, and gets more positive yardage. And there we see the shielding block once again. It would have been very easy to make the mistake that time and block in the back. And Sanford with a 56-yard kickoff return. Adding to his total numbers, it could uh, put him in the history books here at Kentucky. Wilson is being aided, but on most of his own power, it gets out. You see the possession story for Kentucky. They were able to move the ball on most of those early drives. can get eight and nine yards at a chunk in this half it could be abysmal for the orange terry fair holds him down once again kentucky lining up in a formation that is very familiar to what tennessee does offensively the three wide receivers really is spreading this team out it's not allowing kentucky rather not allowing tennessee to get the quick safety force that they're accustomed to james tucker 32 in blue set at the top of your screen Farrell at the bottom. Williams. Mo Williams touchdown. Unbelievable. Untouched. This may be remembered as the day that time stood still looking at the stadium clock there's still 15 minutes to play in the third quarter mo williams with a run that i thought he wouldn't be able to make but it's a cutback and there's no one there little has a chance to come down the line of scrimmage but he doesn't crash hard enough williams good enough speed to turn it up i think philip fulmer hit on a very key point in that halftime conversation with bob kessling that is a defense that normally would recover and they didn't and actually hung their heads on that play well another thing that has happened and i've mentioned it before is that they have now spread that team out they have taken the safeties out of the force now the safeties are lined up over wide receivers and their first thought is coverage you see the clock uh, now showing 1447 which uh, is not accurate either so they're still working on it still trying to, de to determine how much time was in fact coming off the clock 
It didn't take long, that's for sure. 56-yard kickoff return from Sanford. And then a couple of plays, and Mo Williams is in the end zone again. His third touchdown of the day, his 17th rushing of the year. That's a happy camper. Yep. Little things become very critical now. What Kentucky has to do defensively is not become too cautious. They've had a nice change of pace in their defensive signal calling. They need to continue that to keep Tennessee off balance. The Wildcats haven't claimed a beer barrel in 10 years. But when you stop and think about it, with a Mo Williams, you've got plenty of barley and a lot of hops. Kentucky, 24 to 9. 24 to 9, Kentucky right out of the gates with a Keogh Sanford kickoff return. And then two plays later, Mo Williams into the end zone for his third score of the day. Ryan Savinsky will kick off. Fair is back deep. They've been pooching these kicks, generally. And they do it again. And a fair catch is called for at the 34-yard line. We talked about the defense hanging its head there. And you notice number one for Tennessee. You know, I'm expecting, you know, we had talked about Leonard Little so much going into this ball game. You see him right there appearing at the top of your screen. And I thought right there for an instant, he might have been able to turn on the speed and make a play on Williams. But he doesn't. It, you know, that is a reflection of how they've played all day long. Just a little off, not as intense as what they need to be. Absolutely. Now, Manning, who generally throws underneath, gives it to Graham. Picks up a couple of yards. And we touched on it early today without Bubba Miller suspended for at least one game, just a game, to make absolutely certain that the NCAA is taken care of. He's the spearhead of that offensive line. They have not been able to open any wide gaps. And just with that three-down lineman set that Mike Archer has given, Dante Key and Supi and company have managed to get through and give Manning some pressure. Second and six. Right at the sideline for the first down. At the 45-yard line, George Harris there to polish up. You know, one of the things that, that Peyton Manning is looking at when he gets under the center, when they do go to a four-man front and they spread out with the three wide receivers, he's looking to see how many players there are in a box, which is around the tight end, the tackle area. And if he sees seven players in the box, he will normally try and pass the football. If he sees six, they will run the ball. That time there were six, and he still went for the quick pass. The clock continues to malfunction. They're trying to keep it down on the field. It still shows 13.47 on the clock, and I'm sure that they're making the coaches of both teams aware that the official time will be kept on the field. And we'll do our best up here to keep you abreast of just how much time is remaining through the course of the quarter and in the game. I saw the official timekeeper over near the beer barrel, so that may be why we're having problems with the clock. <laughs> Due to malfunction of the clock, due to malfunction of the clock, we will keep the clock on the field. The time will be kept on the field. The time will be kept on the field. So it's a first and ten for Tennessee with the ball just beyond the 45-yard line. There's Cleve Hall, the official timekeeper, and there's that. There's that John that Cameron like a very watch. official watch. <laughs> Manning out to Kyler. Six or seven yards. Now, there's got to be some gaps there in that coverage to throw underneath and, and take advantage. It, it's as if Tennessee's offense got a little impatient at a point in the first half. Well, you've mentioned two things. Number one, they had a couple of drops early in the ball game. What a drop does to you as a receiver. It makes you hesitate when you catch it, and no longer are they getting the big runs after the catch. That's one of the things that they've been great at all season long is turning a short pass into a long game. Second down and three. Graham should have the first down. Inside the 45, near the 43-yard line of Kentucky. Snarden and Schlegel combined on the stop. 
is a team that has lost so much of its secondary. There's injuries everywhere. They have had to play more basic because of those losses. The veterans like Hiles and Stephen Hall. Talk right. about those injuries. They've only had three starters start all ten ball games on defense. Graham. Oh, Jay Graham running right through a few tacklers there. Down near the 30-yard line, Littleton Ward drags him down. Pick up of 13 yards for Jay Graham. Watch the guard and the tackle both pull around, and there's a hold there that doesn't get called. Robert Poole grabs a hold of Mike Schellenberger and just pulls him down, and normally you'd see a yellow flag right there. You saw Lehman Boyd also try an arm tackle, which doesn't work against Graham. First and 10 at the Kentucky 30. The cutback, Graham slips, hits the turf. That's the first time we've seen that happened today. This is a field that has had some rain, but they've done a pretty good job in keeping it intact. And frankly, yesterday, the forecast was for some rain to come through here today as the front made it through the state of Kentucky, but it has held off for now. It'll be interesting to see what they choose to do here on second and nine. They're, they're getting close to scoring territory. This is a critical down for Tennessee. for Price, incomplete. Careless Price, the intended receiver. Plenty of heat from Reggie Russ on the safety blitz coming in to get Manning. We talked about Russ in the open, and there he is, 10 yards off the line of scrimmage with a late blitz, and there's no one to pick him up. And he gets a nice shot on Peyton Manning. What's amazing about Manning right there is still at 215 pounds. He's able to withstand that, and most quarterbacks would still be on the ground. Russ, the senior out of Texas City. Three-man pass rush again. Peyton Manning has had trouble with this look so far. Third and nine. The out pattern incomplete. Joey Kent was out of bounds. And see, that's a breakdown in concentration. I've got to see that one again because from my vantage point, I know I'm 200 yards away, but it looked like Joey Kent was clearly in bounds. The pass is a little late coming out from Manning. There he is, right there on the sideline. That's awfully close. That's one of the reasons you wear black shoes so you get those calls. Those little tricks of the trade. <laughs> yeah, those little wide receiver tricks of the trade. Hall in for a field goal try at 46. He's three for four today. On the left pass. Oh, that's just a beauty. Absolutely perfect. His toe keeping Tennessee in it. Um, 24 to 12 score in the third. Official time being kept on the field. Back after this word from your local station. Tennessee being held to threes. Trail by 12, 24 12. Don't forget, coming up next week, they'll be home at Neyland Stadium to close out their season, the traditional rivalry against Vanderbilt. November 25th, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central Time. You know, when things go right, they go right. Look at those two kids. They're balancing on about three inches of that bench right there, and they've been there for almost the whole ball game. <laughs> that takes talent. A little superstition there. Going to stay there as long as the Big Blue continues with his lead. 11.07, we're told, officially left on the clock, being kept on the field. Being taken out by Sanford. Well, after a 56-yarder to open the second half you have a little confidence why not bring it out Corey Gaines is down there to make the stop after a 17 yard return down to Bob Kessler and not only is the game clock not working the play clock isn't working either which is going to be a big problem for the quarterback so the back judge is going to give hand signals to the quarterback so he can look for example he'll put 10 fingers up and then count down the quarterback to make sure he gets the playoff in time there's Cleet with clock <laughs> that, that's a tough assignment. And, you know, he wants that other glove on. He yeah. had his cold weather gloves on. He's not happy about that clock malfunctioning at all. Got to take a look and keep on ticking. Here's Haskins, a straight drive. And down he goes. Leonard Little, Steve White, Billy Barron all in there. Billy Barron, the sophomore out of River Ridge, Louisiana. 6'3", 262-pounder, was actually the first to get to him. 
and Haskins is coming off. He's that, that shoulder has gotten to him again. Well, you notice how he went down. That uh, left shoulder bent. And Jeff, Jeff Speedy. Speedy's back in the ball game. Yep, Jeff Speedy coming in. 6'2 junior out of Franklin, Tennessee. Brentwood Academy. A nominee for GTE All-American. 3.76 GPA. So he's intelligent. But he's not quick enough to get away from that pressure as Barron comes through again. We continue to work on Haskins. We've got a marker down. Holding against the Wildcats. So not a good back job of holding them. <laughs> well, this is just the scenario you touched on earlier with that first drive. One thing that is so important on the We're three holding out. against the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. Haskins coming back into the game and Speedy leaves. But this is just what Tennessee wanted in that opening drive to get some field position and move Kentucky backwards. Right now they have them backed up and this is a tough third down even if Jeff Haskins, Billy Jack Haskins, is 100%. Into the end zone he goes. Rolling out. Throws it incomplete. Tucker, the intended receiver. And now, Kentucky will be forced to punt and into a very stiff wind to give Tennessee the kind of field position it really wants to turn up the heat here in the third quarter. With all the athletes that Tennessee has on their ball club here, the best that Kentucky can hope for, hope for is just a fair catch. They don't want to give them room to return this ball. Jimmy Carter to punt it away. Freshman, redshirt freshman out of Dunwoody, Georgia. Summers is waiting at the 40. He may need to move up. He and Terry Fair are back here. High into the air. Wind grabs it. Fair catch called for and nearly dropped by Summers. That was a tough one to bring in to the 27-yard line. Now a little lift between he and Mo Williams. Here's a look at this week's Burger King Top 10 Fan Poll, where you, the fan, votes for who's number one. This week's number one team, Nebraska. And if you look at the numbers, the fans don't believe in Tennessee either. Or the fans that go to Burger King don't. That's right. Stop by your local Burger King restaurants to find out how you can cast your vote for number one. This volunteers team hoping for things to fall their way the rest of this regular season. And we're told that uh, Peyton Manning is being for informed that the clock is indeed accurate now with 9.45 remaining in the third quarter. So the pressure is no, no longer on Cleet to keep up with the time remaining on the field of play. But Florida State in Florida, that's a big matchup where the volunteer faithful is concerned and of course I touched on that Air Force Notre Dame situation but long before they can hope for all of that to occur they have to take care of their own business and right now they're in some trouble down by 12 with 945 remaining in the third quarter now we're told the 25 second clock is the problem as they try to reset hit now they, they do. That's about the 60-40 that they're used to at Tennessee with play selection. That's Peterson. And we mentioned early the loss of Bubba Miller, what that might mean. Now, granted, if you were to ask the Tennessee coaches where do they have the most depth at any one position, it would be there. And Trey Peterson, as we fall start, against the offense movement in the line before the snap still first down we talked about peterson early and you see manning coming out to call the audible just throws peterson off just enough and he's the guy who had started earlier now the old guard doesn't like watching that first and 15 play fake out pattern complete benji schuler gets his first reception of the game if the name sounds familiar it should out of Bryson City, North Carolina. Now that's okay by Tennessee standards. You force them into a second and eight situation where 
they still have to make two good plays to get a first down. And that's what the Wildcats defensive scheme has been all about today. Now there are four down linemen here. Quick hitch. Schuler. But he doesn't get past that first tackle. As Lehman Boyd drags him down by the shoelaces. Our Jefferson Pilot Sports scoreline. Florida, a 41 point favorite in that game. Crowd rises to attention on third and three for Tennessee. Five wide receivers. Don't be surprised by a quarterback draw right here. Looking for Kent. He's got it this time. No stepping out of bounds or dropping it. This time for number 11 in white. The junior out of Huntsville, Alabama brings it in. This is called Tennessee's zero formation. There are no running backs in the backfield. Five wide receivers. Puts all the pressure on the secondary. You see right there, the coverage is almost there. Number eight, George Harris slapping his hands, knowing that it was his responsibility to stay in that outside zone. Graham wrapped up by Schoenberg. Well, he's been everywhere today. Very active. You know, a lot has to be said, and I'm sure you remember this well from your playing days at Stanford. When you're a senior, you're playing your last home game. It's pretty meaningful. Sure, and, and this is a guy who gives everything that he has to this ball club. And, you know, we talked about some of the things that he's done. Plays both ways, offensively and defensively, and he still has one more season to go. Yeah, he's a junior. So many of these defensive players are seniors, and they're playing with a lot of heart today. Over the middle to Nash. Nash! Not quite there. Just short of the end zone. But Kentucky inside a yard away from the touchdown. And that's one of the things that Kentucky has wanted to concentrate on is the run after the catch. And he does get away from the first tacklers, but it's a well-thrown ball by man. He gets there, and you see two guys kind of just overrun it. And then still enough pursuit to get there and get him right before he gets into the end zone. Power eye set here. Manning on the quarterback sneak. No signal as yet. Even at 6'5", and actually he's more 6'6 six, six than 6'5". Six, and we're still unable to get it there. And you know what? When you're that tall, it takes a little while to get those legs warmed up. He has those high tops. Funny, because watching him during warm up, he reminds me a little bit of Johnny United yeah. with those black high tops. Yeah, I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. Reminds you more of United than his dad. Manning again. Touchdown, Tennessee. Touchdown was more a result of Kentucky not being able to move the ball on offense than anything that Tennessee really did offensively. Schellenberger coming up to meet him, but it was a bit too late. I think that time he turned to the side and figured there'd be less to hit. Now the extra point for Jeff Ball. And the Volunteers down only five 24 19 they're trying to move to nine and one and six and one in the southeastern conference and behind a heisman candidate they could get there smoky is smoking tennessee back into it it's 24 to 19 down by five but they are trailing Kentucky team that is playing inspired football today for Bill Curry. A coach that many had speculated could be coaching his last game today. High into the air to kick to Keo Sanford. Again, a yard deep, he brings it up. And again, he's hammered short of the 15. So after a 56-yard kickoff return to open this half, He's been stopped shy of the 20 both times. This time he is hammered. And you saw him take a quick look down to see where he was, and that hesitation cost him the running room getting up behind his blockers. They cannot afford another three-and-out series right here. They've only had one, and we saw what the result of it was. They gave 
Tennessee the ball inside the 30-yard line. They score. You bet. On the Manning one-yard run. Corey Gaines made that stop for the Volunteer special teams. Run the option into the boundary. Haskins again, and there is a price to be paid for that play. We've already seen him leave this game in this quarter in the last series. Ron Green, number 55. Freshman out of Severna Park, Maryland, making the stop, and he's favoring that left shoulder again. But everybody on that offensive team knows that that shoulder is maybe what their this ball game is resting on. And the offensive linemen have to pick it up a notch because that Tennessee front is now starting to come after them. That time I saw more pursuit from the backside than I've seen all day long. Yeast. Looking for Yeast. Brad Yeast brings it in for a first down. Big league throw and catch right there. That ball was thrown before Yeast came out of his break. Just a quick rollout, drop back to the left side, set and throws. And that ball, like I said, is up in the air before Yeast comes out of his break. Two catches for 22 yards for Yeast today, and he does have a drop, and I mean a drop that was for a touchdown. Can you lay off receivers dropping ball? <laughs> <laughs> Williams, the lone setback, gets it. And he is called down by Bill Duff, sophomore from Delran, New Jersey, and might be the most improved player on this defensive team. Duff, among others, second string defensive linemen have really aided Philip Fulmer's team. And what they've done is they have a fresh set of legs coming in after this Kentucky front. And Kentucky's played well to this point, but it's really hard when guys are coming in fresh and with clean uniforms. Yeah, that's right. And clean uniforms really throw you off. They, and that's why you see more quickness from that down line. They are fresh. Paul Williams sit out beyond the 35 to the 36 yard line. Billy Barron makes the tackle. Tyrone Hines also in on that pile. Junior out of Brownsville, Tennessee. Look at those numbers on Mo Williams. What he's done. Rushing yards. Rushing attempts. These are all records this season. Absolutely incredible. 299 yards in one game against South Carolina. That was his coming out party. Third down and five. over the middle and Elliot Uzelak has done a tremendous job of finding those seams with his backs coming out of the backfield and more important converting this third and five into a first down moving the ball into Tennessee territory now no longer are the volunteers able to work on a short side of the field there you see Elliot Uzelak next to Mike Archer on the left Uzelak was a head coach most recently at Navy prior to going to Colorado before coming over to Kentucky. Haskins inside the Tucker and hits his knees at the 40-yard line. Now you look at the, uh, the coaching staff that uh, Bill Curry's assembled. Ray Dorr was a head coach at Southern Illinois. Mike Drake was a head coach at New Mexico, Western New Mexico. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know what Uzlak majored in when he was in college? Give it to me. Physical education. Yeah. And Russian history. See, but that's true of most coaches. After PE, they're they all go historians. for something really yeah. wild. <laughs> Second and six. Williams is stopped by Gallion this time. Gallion and Barron both coming through there. Scott Gallion is a young man whom we had a chance to chat with uh, last night. We talked a little bit about the, the rivalry and the fact that when you've dominated a series as, as Tennessee has, this becomes just any other game to the players. And that may have been the problem with Tennessee in the first half of today's game. They've been playing it like any other game rather than a rivalry game. They have stepped up their level of play, but so has Kentucky. And here we are with another critical third down situation, third and seven, three wide receiver set. Maybe he'll go to Mo Wins out the backfield again. They're showing blitz. Ask 
Haskins in trouble. Let's it fly incomplete. They were showing blitz and backed off, and then Steve White came crushing through to get a piece of it. Marcus Cross, the tight end, was the intended receiver. But Kentucky did manage some field position out of this drive after the poor return from Sanford. Jimmy Carter will punt it away. What you would like to do right now, you'd like to limit that return. They're in a tight punt formation, which surprises me a little bit, because what that can allow Tennessee to do is to pin those outside cover men in. High into the air. Summers with a fair catch. And they'll have the ball at the 12-yard line with the Volunteers, and we've got a late marker. Well, you have to give him some room, and that apparently is going to be the call. I'd be totally flabbergasted if that were the call because I'd never see that call. It was interference with the opportunity to catch the kick against the kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Uh, questionable at best. I'm having a hard time with that, especially when he's making an effort to get yeah. away from that guy. Yeah. We want to thank Duncan Machinery Movers here in Lexington for the use of their plane this afternoon that we're using to get some great pictures from our high end zone camera. Which I one was you? <laughs> Manning. Quick out pattern to Kyler. Effective for a first down. Lehman Boyd makes the stop. Kyler does a good job there. There are two guys right there. You can dodge one guy. Two guys coming up to attack for you. You just try and split them, and that's exactly what he did. Ran right in between them because they're indecisive as to who's going to make the first hit on the ball carrier. First and ten, Tennessee. Play fake. Now it's Joey can't deep. Joey can't deep. Joey can't touch down. certain to make it work. It's the ninth touchdown of the season for Kent. And there you see Coach Sanders who signals in those plays. Very pleased at the outcome. The Volunteers are going to go for two. Going to make it a 28, 27, 24 game. Caught for two. Dustin Moore, the tight end. So the Volunteers now lead it by three, 27 to 24. There's Dustin Moore, a guy who started the year as a defensive end, and he has so many credentials. They've been trying to find a way to get him involved in the offense. He rushed for over 2,100 yards while he was a senior in high school. Here's a replay. Watch him bury the ball into the stomach of Graham, and then comes right up throwing. And you can see the distance that Kent has already established over Harris, and there's no catching Kent from behind. Yeah, Graham really played this fake well, didn't he? A bite. A big bite. Yeah, and it's over. Kent, the junior out of Huntsville, Alabama, is coming in today, only needing a few catches to break the single-season record of 58 set by Thomas Woods back in 1988. Got a busy quarter so far, 25 points on the board. For the Kentucky fans, they're a little disappointed, but they're looking for their ball to climb back in. That touchdown catch did eclipse the Thomas Woods record of 88 for the single season record of total catches for a receiver at Tennessee. Sanford again. Boy, he nearly broke another one. Corey Gain 
Page again making the saving tackle for Tennessee. So now the Big Blue finds itself behind by three with 2.23 remaining in the third quarter. They have played so well today, yet another challenge in front of them after this. I think two things are in their favor. If they can get a decent drive going here, you have to look at what Tennessee has done. They play well with the wind at their back, and it's a factor today. And if Kentucky can play well and keep this game even, maybe a kicking uh, game will be the difference in this ballgame. Oh, Williams on the ground, five, maybe six. And anytime you've got a back as durable as a Mo Williams, somebody that can carry it 40 times if need be, that can help you when you're going against the wind as they are in this situation. Yeah, he has no problem running into the wind. Tucker leaves the game. Yeast returns for Kentucky offensively at a wide receiver spot. Kentucky has also gone back to their two tight end set here, so maybe they are just going to try and grind it out with Mo Williams. Second and four. Williams off the left side. That's near a first down. Very close. What Tennessee needs to be careful of right now, because they're looking at that two tight end set, they're thinking run, and I watched how quickly the safety filled that time. Last week, they hit Coleman, the, rook the rookie, the freshman, with two with two play action passes. Now you see the scoring in the third. Tennessee's had very big third quarters this year. This is should come as no surprise to the fans that the Volunteers are having a, a big third quarter. And I'm sure Philip Fulmer challenged them mentally at halftime. And then the moment we start the second half, they give up a 56-yard kick return, and then Mo Williams gets in on two plays to cushion their lead. But the Volunteers have responded in a very big way. They have their first lead since early. They led 3-0, and then it had been all Kentucky. First and 10 after the measure. Williams wrapped up by Gallion. just nothing doing right there at the point of attack. If, if I'm Haskins and I'm under the center and have that play called, I have to look over there and realize that I'm outnumbered on that side before the play has started. You can see the safety with the quick fill right there, and then there's nothing happening because he takes up a block that the lineman was supposed to get on the linebacker. One of the things that's helped Tennessee defensively in this half has been the changing rotation of linemen. We've seen uh, the Duffs and the Colemans and the Billy Barons come in in a series and play well, only to allow the frontliners a chance to get some rest and come in with fresh legs. Haskins on the curl, finds Yee. Pick up of five, maybe six yards on the play. And that's right in front of Deron Jenkins, and they're really challenging him today. They've gone after him a couple times, thrown the ball short in front of him, and I would think that he may get itchy feet and try and step up there for an interception. Kentucky will no doubt allow the clock to run out because they want to ride with the wind in the fourth quarter. That they will, trailing by three, as the Volunteers rank fourth in the country, try to stave off Kentucky and hold on to the beer barrel. Part of the tradition rich SEC. 27-24 here in the bluegrass. The Wildcats trailing by three to Tennessee. And the beer barrel lies in the balance. There at the Tennessee bench. All of the scores of all the games imprinted on the barrel. And I'm sure Bill Curry is thinking about a lot more than just the barrel. Touchdowns. I think we both agreed he needed about 35 carries, maybe 170 yards for Kentucky to have a chance. Third and three to open the quarter. Haskins on the option. Look at that courage and strength and stick-to-itiveness. Unbelievable. Hold it to Billy Jack. Oh, wow.
described as gritty, a player with NFL toughness, and he showed it all right there. Three missed tackles by Tennessee. You know, you watch the college game long enough, and you say, James, what separates the college game from the professional level? And it's stories like this. Situations where a team is given no chance. Outmanned at every position. Your quarterback hasn't practiced all week. And then he takes an option play and runs it 47 yards through three tacklers that may have more speed than he has. And I was in the locker room before the game, saw him standing there in front of his locker, and I could see the hump in his left shoulder where you could tell that it had been separated. And here he is, and there's Mo Williams just providing a little shield block for him right there. But that is a play that Billy Jack Haskins will tell his grandkids about one day. Wow, look at Tucker coming back to block there. Oh, and Schlarman made a great wow. block. Those are Barry Jones, 69, just buried that volunteer to help allow Haskins in. But even with all of that help, and there was plenty of it, Billy Jack Haskins deserves the Medal of Honor. You know, it's a run that he did all on his own, but with a heck of a lot of help. Mm -hmm. Javinsky kicks off. Comes down to Summers. John Summers tripped up at the 30-yard line. So a little take that from Kentucky as they get back into the lead after Tennessee had reclaimed some momentum in this game in the third quarter which should have been expected to some extent. We take a look at our Lee Apparel three three-quarter stats. A little of that has changed here early in the fourth, but the rushing yards with Kentucky, that was a must coming in. But I think the numbers in the air for Haskins, uh, a lot of gravy for this team. Place the likes of Hall and Van Hiles, and he has nine tackles today. And they're doing exactly what we talked about they needed to do because watching this Tennessee team on film, all we saw was short, fast, long run. They've been able to make tackles after the catch here. Second and seven for Peyton Manning. Goes to Graham. A quick burst from Jay Graham. You know, it might sound crazy to say that somebody makes a great play on a 10-yard gain, but Schellenberger here is falling down, reaches out, and just gets a hand on him and slows him down just enough so someone else can make come and clean up the play. First and 10, Tennessee. Manning softly to Graham. That's a, one of his real specialties, and Graham near a first down. But once again, the Kentucky defense reacting in enough time to come in and make the play because we've seen Graham take that and go the distance with it. Lamont Smith making the tackle. Schellenberger dropping in coverage, trying to locate a man in his area, shields off, Nash behind him, and then he comes up and he's in position to make the play on Graham. Second and a yard. Up the middle, first back, Rochester Ford. Junior playing in his home state today, Danville, Kentucky. He was a all-state defensive lineman in high school. You know, Danville. When they watch Chester Ford, pretty good hole there, James. Very good hole right there. Chester Ford must really grade him. He was the Player of the Year here in Kentucky, and to let him cross over the border, we don't like to see that happen. First and 10 from the 34 of the Wildcats. Graham again, guarding his way to the Kentucky 25, a yard shy of the first down. And now, the yards on the ground for Graham and Ford, seven, eight, nine at a chunk against this Kentucky defensive front. And what's happening is Kentucky has tried to alternate 
some of their defensive linemen, and they may need to get their starters back in, even if they're a little tired. Second and one. Manning will check off. Looking for the fade. Tipped into the air by Ward with his foot as he was trying to check Maurice Staley, 21. Some of the Tennessee faithful believe there had been some contact there, but no flag. You know, as a wide receiver, it, it, wide receivers are always going to push a little bit while they're going down the field. I, I really enjoy it when I see a non-call because they're both trying to go over the ball. Their feet get tangled up more so than their upper bodies. I know the receiver wants the call, but that ball has to be more on the money than that. Third and two. And the conversion ratio may move to above 50% off that run from Chester Ford. Looks to be very close. So the former down there very quickly to check on that mark to make sure it's a right foot mark, and it is. Clock continues to move or under 12 minutes. Bill Curry's Wildcats trying to pull off what would be for Kentucky, clearly the upset of the year, and one of the conferences and the nation's upsets of the season. Should the score hold up? Manning out to Kyler. Tony Woods, 29, makes the stop. He's a true freshman out of Jefferson, Indiana, St. Xavier High School. And a young guy that's uh, highly touted. Many believe that if he remain healthy, he might be able to play at the next level. He has great quickness over there. One of the things that Bill Curry was concerned about was his ball club being fresh enough to stay with Tennessee because Tennessee coming off of a bye week and they haven't played last week. Second and one. Manning. Tyler. Touchdown, Tennessee. reception of the day, his first for a touchdown. Tyler and Nash almost ran into each other on that pass pattern, and they kind of rubbed the defensive back off of each other. The Volunteers' offense continues to put pressure on Kentucky now to make plays when they get the ball back, as they have solved Kentucky's defensive presence in the first half. But the former's team read, react, adjust. Peyton did. And there's the result. Kyler with his first touchdown reception of the year. Greg Kyler just adding to that group of tremendous wide receivers. They'll use seven of them, will the volunteers. Bill Curry's team has answered the challenge on many an occasion. They'll have to do it again. You see the scoring drive, 69 yards, just nine plays. Notably, 3-10 off the clock. Hall will kick it off. Sanford, back deep with George Harris. Harris at the six. Harris, beyond the 20 to the 23-yard line and a flag down. And uh, that's very important. Uh, the Wildcats have had problems when backed up with poor field position limiting what they can do from an offensive standpoint with as many injuries as they've had. And very seldom is, is a flag thrown that deep in the return area. We have an illegal block in the back against the receiving team on the return. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down and 10. And again, it points up the special teams problems, and you see more penalties even late in the season in, in college football where special teams are concerned, and uh, very noteworthy here. You see Bill Curry getting a, a hand on perhaps the guilty party. David Ginn, reserve linebacker, as he chats with him. Chats with him? Yeah, I, I'll call it that. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. Askins rolling right, but right in the middle. Gets away from him, though. Let's it go for Coleman. That had touchdown possibilities written all over it. And now Haskins has to come off. His shoulder really dragging. Noel 
was back covering. And now, after making that throw and rolling right into Leonard Little, he was going to be tagged and was spun away from the initial pressure. And they may have to go the rest of the way with Speedy. He's in more pain now than ever. Does a great job in just avoiding Little the first time. But you see the guy coming back on him, and this ball comes down in good enough position for the receiver to make a play on, but just can't get his hands on the football. Speedy is run down. And you know that initial hit from Little, which he spun away from, might have been the one. That might have been the well, hit. It may have been enough just to tweak it out of position a little bit. You know, it's probably still stable, but every time he gets hit on it, he needs some recovery time for the pain. The last game of the year for Kentucky, and uh, you want to play until the bitter end. Billy Jack Haskins, what a performance today. Sophomore out of Tillman High School in Paducah, Kentucky, giving way to Jeff Speedy, ironically, out of the state of Tennessee, Brentwood Academy in Franklin. Third and 11. Here comes the pressure. Little got all of it. It's his sixth tackle of the day, his second for a sack. Just no one opened downfield. He had enough time to throw the football. Watch him drop back in the pocket. He's looking left and listening. Then he comes back to his right. He'd like to throw the football, but there's no one away from the defenders downfield where he can even throw the football. He'd probably make the smart decision just taking the sack. Carter does have a win, gusting it better than 20 miles per hour behind him, but he punts from his end zone. Fair and Summers are at the 45. And we'll have room to work with the fumble. Kentucky's got it. Lehman Boyd. How big is that? Well, Kentucky will have the opportunity right here, but now they're going to have to come up with a play. Both guys were kind of close to that football, and actually the guy who is not the receiving man should have been up there and ready to block and even ready to pounce on that fumble. So Fair and Summers confused on the return. They both had room with which to work as they come together on just who was going to feel that play. Williams Mo to midfield. Tyrone Hines trips him up. And you know, he's giving the indication, James, with every carry that he might break it. He's the type of runner, when you watch him run, he just makes you hold your breath. You gasp when you watch him. The word on Billy Jack Haskins, Bob Kessler. Not good for Kentucky. Haskins has separated his left shoulder there, taping him up. Ice bag on it. He's out for the rest of the day. Tim, it was interesting, though. He was sitting on the bench. They were looking at him. He heard the roar of the crowd. He jumped up away from the doctors to go up and see exactly what happened. So he's not playing, but he's still very much in the game. Second and two, and Mo Williams ran into some other momentum from Jonathan Brown, big number 91, sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, for a loss. He's lucky he didn't lose the football right there because he gets hit right after he takes the handoff from Speedy. And but you want a back to be prepared for that initial hit, and he was that time. Timeout called by Speedy and Kentucky. It's a very important series for the Wildcats. They get a break with the fumble. Now an opportunity to cash in and utilize clock and keep Manning and company off of the field. 34-31, Tennessee by 3, 8.48 remaining. Billy Jack Haskins with a clinched fist, urging on Jeff Speedy, his replacement. Boy, what a remarkable performance he's given. And this is as big a play as Jeff Speedy will have. Third and five. O'Farrell in motion. If he had plenty of room, he had been led perhaps a bit too far, which will force a fourth and short. 
ball is just thrown just a little late. He's looking in the middle, waiting for O'Farrell to uncover, and just throws it right to, and you see him out of bounds in front of the marker right there. This is a critical play right here. That has been the book on Speedy. One of the reasons Haskins took the job was his, a little hesitation, a, a half second slower than Billy Jack. Fourth and less than a yard. He has the first down. Important for two reasons. First, you need a score. Secondly, keeps the clock moving. As you look at our Jefferson College sports scoreline, Florida now, out with a flurry against Vanderbilt. Clemson and South Carolina remains tight. And that's another one that's very important. Penn State and Michigan. The Wolverines get the Buckeyes next week. First and 10, Kentucky. Play fake to Williams. Got him. He's got him. Down Look the middle. middle for Coleman. Incomplete. Boy, there was plenty of help. Some of it illegal. He used his right arm. Even though Jenkins knocked the ball away, he used his right arm to get himself up and to keep Coleman on the ground. Again, a solid play fake from both Speedy and Mo Williams. And we talked about this with Chavis yesterday. They are a safety force team. Going to get him with a face mask with that arm when he reached in. We have a face mask foul against the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So all they get is five the You see the safety's up. You see no up. He doesn't use the right arm to hook him, so I'm incorrect here. There's the face mask right there. Only five yards. By Terry Fair at the end of the play. Yep. Only five yards from the spot, but a first down. Tennessee has only been penalized three times for 10 yards. Kentucky three for 20. Two of the least penalized teams in the Southeastern Conference. Sprint draw gets it down to the 36-yard line. And he almost missed Williams with the handoff right there. Jesse Sanders made the tackle. Second down and six after a gain of four. Coleman leaves the game, and Craig East returns. As you see the numbers left and right, a lot of balance there for Mo Williams. There was a time this year when they're... Their offense tended to go to the right side behind Brandon Jackson and Jonas Lena. Second and six. Williams stopped at the point of attack by Leonard Little and company. And we saw that 90 yards of offense on the right side, and a lot of that is that screen pass that was actually a lateral mm -hmm. later credited to him because he has been balanced about everywhere he's gone today. Fulmer has built a solid program during his stay, taking over for Johnny Majors in the interim and then later becoming head coach. This is a trying time for him today. Third down and seven. Getting a lot more flaw out of these cats than anticipated. Quick pass to East. Speedy running out of time, just letting it fly incomplete. Well, that was dangerous. That was very dangerous. Steve White had him wrapped up. Dangerous, but the ball was not far from Mo Williams. He must have a magnet in his body. Look at this. He's on the ground. The officials missed that call right there. And on fourth and seven, with 6.52 to play, Bill Curry, in effect, is making a decision that says the ball game. You know, O'Farrell just came into the ballgame. He was a former quarterback, and it might not have been a bad time to let him run the option. Fourth down and seven. Caught by Tucker. First down, Kentucky. How did they have that guy playing defense all this time? Complete with a plate in your eye, huh? Tucker went up. You can just see he's bigger than anybody they have in the secondary. And the big mitts, he just pulls that ball in, turns it upfield, 
and then sticks it out to gain a little extra yardage. See, I really like the call. You see him hobbling off. I love the call, though, with 6.50 left, and Curry goes for it. There's a lot on the line for the future of his program. And that's a decision that tells you that the audible they have nothing to lose in this game. Into the option to the short side of the field, and Gallion was there. There's a the flag up. down late, too. Maybe holding against Kentucky. All of that speed that Tennessee has makes it awfully difficult for a lineman not to get caught a few times holding. Barry Jones is a senior out of Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. He knows the difference between a good hold and a bad hold if you're trying to protect your last line at quarterback. <laughs> a bad one is one that gets called. That's the only definition. We have holding against the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Barry Jones had an interesting statement, uh, perhaps in defense of his head coach. He said, uh, we won half the battle this year. We lost by an average spread of 27 points a year ago. We were only in a few games. This year, we've been in just about every game we've played. They have been able to close the gap. At the top of the show, we pointed out three or four close losses, and they would love to be sitting here looking at the possibility of playing the ball game. Paul Williams gets it down to about the 30-yard line. Raymond Austin in on the tackle. Well, there was a time after Kentucky beat LSU that they really did have the schedule in their favor. And then when they lost the game to Georgia, and Mike Archer told us that that was the game that hurt most, because he felt that that was a game his defense could win. Georgia had been hit with perhaps as many or more injuries than Kentucky. But then came the loss to Vanderbilt. And that, as much as anything, uh, drilled this program, and Bill Curry in particular, with a heavy blow that they're trying to recover from even now. Second and 16. Speedy. There's confusion in the route. Tucker ran and out, and Tucker was really defined at how he was running his route. He was trying to get away, yeast rather, he was trying to get away from Jenkins on the out pattern, and the ball was just thrown deep. It may have been a good throw by Speedy, because Jenkins was in position where he would have, would have had a chance to break on the ball and possibly intercept it. Third down and 16, 515 remaining. And uh, considering the decisions already made in this drive, one would have to believe, if you, as you look at time of possession, and Kentucky's gotten the job done in this quarter, that they are in four-down territory I would yet think again. field goal would also be a big call right here. Yeah, it would be. In trouble, could not take a sack. And now we've got a marker down. Barron and White combine on the stop. And now we'll have to wait for the play. Now, Speedy came up pointing to Mo Williams. We have no foul. There was a receiver in the area. No foul. A receiver in the area. So here comes the decision. There you see that pressure breaking down. That speed off the corners. And they will go for the field goal. Savinsky, who has struggled some this year. Now, this is a senior out of Henry Clay High School in Lexington. But he's struggled this year. Only 10 of 22 in field goals. This is a 48-yard try to tie the game. This season, 5 of 12. Speedy to hold. And it's blocked. Can be returned by Jenkins. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Blocked by Raymond Austin, and uh, Philip Fulmer has always been proud of uh, his special teams, both coverage and his field goal blocks have been dominant. Here's another example to turn the big blue away. Five minutes left. The loneliest man in a blue jersey, Brian Savinsky. It's been a very difficult season for him and limited only to long field goal tries today. Brian Johnson has the only field goal for the Wildcats. 34-31, five minutes remaining, and Peyton Manning would just like to control the ball now as Graham has his lone setback. 
do it in the air with a short passing game. Tyler caught the touchdown pass earlier. Stopped by Tony Woods. And so much of their passing game, James is predicated on controlling the clock. Exactly right. And that time, Manning came up to the line of scrimmage. They had a run called out of the huddle. He looked at it. The configuration had seven men in the box there to stop the run. Quick flip to the outside. They pick up nine yards. Second down, a yard to go. Up the middle, that's a first down. Jay Graham with the carry to the 45-yard line, stopped by Lamont Smith. Don't forget next week, our Lee SEC Game of the Week for the final time in 95, Vanderbilt and Tennessee, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Kentucky does have two timeouts left. Tennessee with a full complement. And the clock continues to run as we near the four-minute mark. So this series becomes almost a must for the Kentucky defense. Graham. That's five, maybe six yards right there. And the clock that wouldn't start at the beginning of the second half now becomes a big factor. That and Jake Graham continuing to rack up big yardage on first down, getting five, six, seven yards a pop. On the day, Jay Graham, 22 carries, 120 yards. That's, that's a quiet 120 when you think about it. Puts him up to 1,200 yards on the season also. Second down, three. Chester Ford, the fullback, carrying some cats with him for a first down. Well, if the last series wasn't a must, this one certainly is for Kentucky. They have not used either of their two remaining timeouts as we approach the three-minute mark. You have to wait until you're able to make a play defensively before you commit to using one of those timeouts. You can't make, can't call timeout after they gain seven yards on first down. Graham. That's another first down. Reggie Rust made the stop. Officials timeout call as they take a look to see if it is in fact the first down. You know, every game has four or five plays that usually turns it one way or the other. And there were several opportunities for Kentucky. I look back at this game from an offensive standpoint, there was always pressure on them to respond to Tennessee's challenges. And they did respond very well. You know, they had a tough time once Billy Jack Haskins went out of the ball game. His great run for that touchdown, the possession before he gets hurt, is critical for them. 237 left in the game. And it is second down and less than a yard. It probably would have helped Kentucky more if that had been a first down. And Peyton is just going to let the uh, game clock wind down right here. Now this, they haven't burned the timeout earlier. They, don't, they can't stop the clock right here. Well, there's your first down, which will stop the clock for the change to move at 216. He's a very bright young man with a tremendous future. Already, if you were to talk to scouts, they'd say that coll collegiate quarterback with the highest ceiling at the next level would be Peyton Manning. Kentucky takes that timeout. They do have one remaining with only 2.16 left in the game. Bill Curry with the loss of Ray Goff, if in fact that is, and we were told there was a press conference earlier today to make it official, with Ray Goff no longer the dean of SEC coaches at one school, Curry had already put in nine years in the league, three at Alabama, six at Kentucky. He, along with Gene Stallings, together would be the longest tenured coaches in this conference at six seasons at one school, which should tell you something about 
the pressure of being the head man at the elite level that is the SEC. And I would really have to believe that if they were going to judge Bill Curry on today's performance, that his team has fared well enough for him to be given another year. And uh, the young man we talked about earlier, Cal Chip, if there's any way that Bill Curry has a good relationship yeah. with that young man, and if he can persuade him to come here, boy, that really does a lot for this program. So you've got Spurrier, that's been in Florida for six years, Stallings and Curry and have all spent uh, six seasons in the Southeastern Conference. And I think a lot of people, like you said, were a little disappointed when they lost to Vanderbilt in their first year coach, Rod Dowhower. Because if someone can come in in their first year and beat you when you've been there for six, that raises a lot of eyebrows. Absolutely. The win over Cincinnati, not a bad team, did serve the confidence of this Kentucky team going into today's game. I think that was obvious. Graham, another carry, gets it inside the Kentucky 30-yard line. Rusk again making the tackle along with Schellenberger, and the clock stops for the final time with Kentucky's timeout. Let's go down to Bob Kessler. Bob? You know, you talked about Tim Couch. Uh, last night, Tim Couch quarterback Leslie County in the playoffs against Belfry. The big buildup, of course, all week has been about Couch and his assault on Josh Booty's record for most yards in a high school career. He hit it last night in the first half against Paul Melton, and then he, uh, the celebration came and they gave him the game ball. Over 11,800 yards now in his career. Then he came back. His team was down 12 nothing, and he came back and led him to a 28-20 victory. Then to top it all off, he plays defense as well, intercepted on the final drive to seal the victory, and he talked about setting the record that was previously held by Josh Booty. And he had, of course, he's in Sports Illustrated all over the newspapers up here in Kentucky. Tennessee and Kentucky now in a serious recruiting war over Tim Couch. A lot of Tennessee fans were there last night, Kentucky supporters, and Couch has a very, very big decision coming up in just a couple of weeks, you would think. Notre Dame, Florida State. You know, it's interesting. You go in a town that size and you see the Bobby Bowdens of the world walking around. That's big news. They're just not there to pick up a local newspaper either. <laughs> at this ball club and with Mo Williams returning, they've just been besieged by injuries. If they can field a healthy team next year, they have a chance to win some ball games and maybe get back in the bowl hunt. Graham, maybe a yard shy of the first down, which would all but end it. Reggie Rusk again coming up to help Snarden. Lehman Boyd. Also in there. Boyd had that uh, big fumble recovery on the punt. That was the last gasp for Kentucky. They could not cash in. So you know, going back to uh, the circumstances here at Kentucky, C.M. Newton, the athletic director here, he and I had a, a chance to talk prior to the game. And, you know, the difficult aspect of the decision really becomes, you see he is short, less than a yard. As an administration, you are making a decision to either A, make the change, and again, you're looking at someone coming in with a new staff the next four or five more years of trying to rebuild a program, or do you stick with the current staff that you have that you thought was making a move, but in truth, when you look at the numbers after six seasons, injuries or not, the, the stats show more L's than W's. And which is a difficult pill for the alumni as well. Last year being 1 in 10, this is a dramatic improvement. If they had been able to, to pull off an upset victory here, it would have gone a long way to cementing what they were doing as a program. This could end it with a first down, and it does. Graham gets it down to the 15-yard line, and now Kentucky can't stop the clock. And once again, Tennessee, when rushing for better than 100 yards, that stat now improves to 38, 1, and 2 since 1990. Run pass balance is what Philip Fulmer appreciates. And he gets it again today. Enough and in time to beat this Kentucky team that really had Tennessee on the ropes. So people will look at this score and they'll wonder was this ball game as close as a three-point ball game? And yes, it was. I'll say so. Tennessee is very fortunate to get out of here today with a win. I will be interested to see what happens tomorrow morning to Tennessee in the polls if Northwestern has an impressive win today. Yeah. Now you're looking at uh, the possibility of their perhaps dropping. 
and they had been the beneficiary of some undefeated teams in front of them being knocked off but you know what over the course of a season and at this level and in this league you're going to have games like this well tennessee was able to climb up from number 16 all the way up to four after that loss to florida in week three so if they can maintain that but it's going to be hard for them to get in that bowl alliance pitcher to get to the big bowl in the eight million dollar payday philip fulmer Moves his team to nine and one, six and one in the conference with Vanderbilt coming up next week on Jefferson Pilot Sports. And the Kentucky season for Bill Curry comes to an end. At two and six in the league, four and seven overall. And now the question, will there be another season for Coach Curry in this Kentucky program? Billy Jack Haskins was courageous to be sure. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. <laughs> 